Bold 3 Detergent Plus Fabric Softener. The Kodak Pocket Instamatic Camera. Spray Relief. This is the uh, Kodak Pocket Instamatic 20 camera. It's a vintage camera. It's from around the 70s. Uh, this was my grandmother's. I was on a trip with uh, a couple of friends recently, and one of them had a, uh, it, was, it wasn't one of these, but it was kind of a um, point and shoot film camera. And he got some great photos on it. Um, and it made me think of this thing that was hanging around. And um, this is not an expensive camera. The Kodak Pocket Instamatic camera starts at less than $28. The camera uh, the guy used was like, it's on eBay for $1,000 right now because they're really popular. And it's got a real lens on it, um, and it's probably 35 millimeter film. This is um, 16 millimeter film, I think, on this. Let's see. Wait a second. What is 110 film? Good question. The 110 cartridge was introduced by Kodak in 1972 as a smaller version of the 126 film format. The film width is 16 millimeters and a four frame strip measures 111 millimeters, hence the name 110 film, rounding down. Because the film cartridges are so small, the cameras themselves could be small. 110 film was released in conjunction with Kodak's first pocket Instamatics. Their extreme portability was heavily marketed and became immediately popular for its ease of use, displacing other sub-miniature camera alternatives. The 16mm film width allowed Kodachrome film in 110 size to be processed on the existing processing machines that processed movie films in standard 8mm film and 16mm film sizes. Kodak spit out more than 25 million pocket Instamatics in under three years, which is why they're super cheap on eBay today. And in 2009, Fujifilm stopped producing 110 format film, but two years later, an Austrian company, Lamography, started making 110 film again and they're currently the only producers worldwide. 110 film was also used in a lot of children's toy cameras, interestingly, and the small negative size of 110 film makes it difficult to enlarge successfully, which has led to its reputation as a grainy, low quality film, which is partially true, but also just because of the difficulty in enlarging it. And if you look at the small photos that are not big, it's harder to see the imperfections. This has led to the misconception that the cartridge itself is incapable of holding film flat enough for making high quality negatives, which is not true. But it comes with this little, um, the, and I've, this is unopened film, so I'm gonna plug it into the camera and uh, then I'm gonna take some photos. And this is, it says it's color film. It's, the speed is 200, 12 exposures. Um, it's in this little, this film expired 1986, <laughs> so I don't know if it'll work, but uh, this was with the camera. Um, it's, a, it's a really cute little camera. It's not, I mean, you could put it in your pocket and be a little bulky. The great thing about it is it's so small, it fits right in your, in your pocket. Um, but the design is um, attractive, and it works a kind of interesting way. Uh, I think that the focus is fixed and I think the aperture is fixed uh, relatively small, so I'm pretty sure it's like an F8 or 9, maybe actually higher, I think F9. So it's pretty safe to shoot with. You're gonna get most of the shot in focus, which is cool. Um, I don't think you can control the shutter speed, but there are two shooting modes. There's um, you know standard shooting mode, and then there's a flash, but the flash is not built into the camera. To flash, you have to use a magic cube. But gee, Grayson, how does your magic cube work? I'm so glad you asked. It's this way, man. Take one, take two, take three, take four flash pictures without changing bulb. From Sylvania Electronic Products comes the Magic Cube. Replacing the Flash Cube for the Instamatic. It's Flash Cube. The Magic Cube is perfect for your pocket Instamatic. How's it work? Get yourself a Flash Cube. It's this way, man. The rotating carousel contains dainty little bulbs filled with shredded zirconium foil. When the shutter release is activated, a pin releases a spring wire into the cube, striking unstable ions called fulminates, causing a tiny explosion, which ignites the zirconium, producing a brilliant flash for all your pictures. No longer will Grandma be a dark blob in the back of the room. Now she'll be lit brilliantly by our magic, magic, magic flash cube magic cubes. 
that's TM. I definitely work for Sylvania Electronic Products. Not to be confused with General Electric, whose ad campaign was, in a word, worse. And these are old, and they look, I don't know if these will work or not, but I will, a little moldy too. Because um, the aperture is so small on these, and you can't control the shutter speed, that you can't really do a lot of indoor photography with this camera, um, unless you strap on this like <laughs> explosive device. So I'm gonna try and take some photos with this, uh, probably mostly outdoors. I will try out the flash, just cause I'm excited to see what'll happen and what it'll look like. Um, but we're gonna open this, uh, this real quick too. And I'm gonna show you how to load this thing. Um, there is a kind of lens cap that you slide open. And um, when it's closed, there is a, a red bar through the viewfinder, you know, gone there. Yeah, so you can't um, accidentally take photos with uh, the lens covered. So the back, there's this little lever and you pop that open and that reveals the inside. Kind of cool. Um, this is the, the button you press to take a photo. And then it's got this little um, slider here. So you take a photo and then advance the film. Kind of cool. Um, there was, I saw somebody looking at one of these where you had to advance it twice. I don't think, I think that might have just been a slightly different Instamatic. Um, but so cool. There's even a little um, thread uh, for uh, attaching to a tripod. Open here. Open a long cut. Okay. And I don't think you really have to worry about um, exposing this to the light by accident, like with um, some things. But see, isn't that kind of peculiar? Oh, it says Coda Color VR Film and 12 exposures. Interesting. So yeah, it's all kind of contained in itself. And I'm pretty sure you just pop it in here. Easy to load. Like this. See, I probably should have, you know. Well, it just it really just kind of sits in there. So it's in there. And then there's a little window in the back here. So you can actually see how many um, shots you have left. You don't have to count because that would be a pain in the butt. And I'll just pop it into the camera so you can see what it looks like when it's in. Yeah. So that's what it looks like when you've got the magic cube engaged. <laughs> All right, so that's the camera. All right, so three weeks and $20 later, I did get the film back. It finally came back. It didn't really turn out, um, which I think is to be expected a 40 year old film. There are a few photos and I'll show you in a second that kind of turned out, but um, yeah, not great. It was a combination of the film being that old and I think that most of the photos, I probably also underexposed too much, underestimating the um, how dark the camera would, would uh, capture the photos. Um, so I've ordered new film. So we'll have a, a fresh spanking new batch. Unfortunately, it'll probably take me a couple weeks to shoot the film and then another month to develop it. So this is a long <laughs> process for this video. They did send me a, um, a little notice with my developed film that says, older damaged film. These pictures enclosed are off colored because the film used was old or affected by heat or humidity or left in the camera too long after exposure. Yeah, <laughs> not surprising. Um, and I got the negatives too, which they look a little different than other negatives. They're really thin. And um, I tried like holding them up, up to light you can't see anything, which probably is characteristic of how they didn't turn out well. Um, so let me show you the photos. So pardon the glare for the other photos. I'll uh, scan them for real, but I'm just going to show you that the prints I got back, they didn't send a CD, um, but that is of a tree. You can see the sky, the blue sky. Um, that one looks like, I have no idea what that was. I thought about popping these into Photoshop and like boosting the contrast and seeing if anything comes out. That one is downtown Atlanta, which so kind of turned out, but you still really can't see much. 
And then that one turned out a little bit more. You can at least tell what it is. That's outdoors, my friend Nathan. Um, this one had the most light, I think. That's obviously a tree. Um, and so they look interesting and they actually are appearing a little better through the camera lens than they are in person, which you know, is hard to imagine considering how much glare is on these photos right now. Um, but this is what they look like. <laughs> and so we can compare that to, um, yeah, you can't see anything in that photo, except the, you know, the sky right there. Um, so we will uh, compare these to the uh, next batch of photos whenever I have those in. But it was a cool experiment to see like, what does film that's like 100 years old look like? It looks like that. <laughs> it looks very um, crusty and washed out and blue. Interesting stuff. I'm filming on my phone right now, um, but last night I did get a magic cube shot to work. Hey, can I do you a favor? What's up? Right. I've still never seen the end of this. Record me take a photo of you. Record you taking a photo of me? This is an experiment. This is an incendiary lighting device. Oh, what? And I don't, it's, it's 45 oh, years old. Oh, cool. So I don't think it's going to work. But I'll, you're filming it in case it explodes. Oh, oh all right. Okay. Everybody say cheese. Uh, wow. It didn't work. We're it didn't work. <laughs> Three, two, no. one. Wow. Three. Still didn't work. What? Wow. Oh my what? God, that was bright. Oh, Holy bright. shit. Okay. And so I think that's the very last of the charges I had from these old cubes, and they don't make them anymore, and I probably won't be purchasing anymore. But I did mention that when you slot the cube into the thing, it changes the shutter speed to um, about 40, whereas normally it's at, uh, I think like 100? I think, I think normally it's 100. So I was thinking, well, so I wanna save the cube so I can change the shutter speed, but it's kinda of bulky to stick something that large on top. So I was trying to snap off the bottom uh, to see if I could just keep this bottom black plate and just have that as a kind of low profile um, way of changing the shutter speed. And so I worked uh, the top off with my pocket knife and I just thought this was kind of cool. So I wanted to take a little video. These are the, um, <clears throat> the bulbs. They're pretty cool. The, the chunky looking ones are the used ones. There's one here that looks like it um, it was defective or didn't work. I think I tried that one last night, but you can still, this is, will this focus? Kind of. You can still see the um, the kind of coiled, super thin wire in. Okay, so that worked. Um, the bulbs, I was able to just pull off and I used uh, pliers to get the, uh, to get the, the wires that were on and off. And this is the little plate left over. I assume it will still functionally change the shutter speed if popped in here. I <clears throat> saw something about, so see that's, you know, you can put that in your pocket still. It's still a pocket instamatic without that cube on top. So that would be pretty cool if that works. Hello, hello. We're back. No, I have not used artificial aging effects. It has taken actually this long to get the photos back. I used to look uh, different. Um, but we have them back, and I'm excited to show you all. This is the film I use. This is, a uh, it's by Lomography, the only company making the film anymore. And this is their Metropolis. And it's their, it's experimental film. When I was getting film for this last time that I took photos, this was the only thing in stock. I wanted, um, just a kind of normal, um, kind. But this is all they had. And it was cool. Like, it's a cool, it's a cool film. It, it applies what you could describe as like an Instagram effect to the film, which I did not want. But the photos look cool. I'm gonna show you all those in a, in, a, in a second. It changes the color some. I think it's even a little extra grainy. And the, the speed of the film is between 100 and 400. I don't know what that means or how they do that, but the photos are cool. Um, and I'd like to get, I've ordered some of the Tiger, the, Lone Macron, the Lomography Tiger film which is the kind of like quote unquote normal, just 110 film. So that's gonna be fun to try out. Um, without further ado, here are the photos. 
So these four ended up being my favorite photos. I took photos in Key West and Atlanta. I think those were the main locations. Um, I, uh, I did pop these into a photo editor to change the contrast and colors to punch them up a bit. Um, and uh, the, the initial color from how the photos came out, it, it did have a bit of an effect from the Metropolis um, that I did change some but I didn't, I didn't dislike it, and I thought it suited the, uh, the especially the city, the, fo the foggy city photos well. Um, but I thought they turned out pretty cool, especially with the colors and whatnot, so. And now for the big question, did the plate trick work with the shutter speed changing? I think it did. I um, at first thought that it didn't, just looking at the photos next to each other, but if I um, kind of transpose them on top of each other like this, you can see a slight difference um, there is not a huge difference between uh, 1 over 100 and 1 over 40 speed, um, but for example, this, these are photos taken with a DSLR with that change um, for reference. So it, it did seem to work, and I did take a close-up video of the, um, the pin does come up out of the uh, pocket Instamatic to the plate which does not normally happen unless you have the magic cube on top of it. So I'm confident that it did work, which is great news, even though in these two particular photos, I couldn't really tell a difference. The last big question I had was um, how cost effective in 2023 the Pocket Instamatic is compared to uh, other alternatives. So in a final showdown, I've created this infographic that pits the Pocket Instamatic against a disposable camera that you would get from Target, CVS, Walmart, and a Polaroid camera, specifically the Instax, because that one is cheaper than the other Polaroids and very popular. So here's the infographic. There are a lot of asterisks applied here. Photo developing prices are for CVS Photo. CVS does not provide a CD of scans with your film. Base price of camera is not factored in price per photo, except for the disposable camera. Base camera prices may vary. Film prices may vary. $70 for 40 Polaroids was the best deal online I found, and there are better 110 film deals than $9 per roll. So, no matter how you crunch the numbers, the Pocket Instamatic is the cheapest and declared our winner. At least for price per photo. Pros and cons! Unless you go load up on ancient magic cubes, the Instamatic does not have a flash. Aesthetics-wise, in my opinion, the Instamatic wins, unless you consider other Polaroid camera models. Disposable cameras create more waste. The disposable and Instamatic are about equally portable. Disposable produces the highest film quality with the largest print size. And 110 film definitely takes the longest time to get developed. And if you like the look of 110 film and want to use 110 film but don't want to buy a Kodak Pocket Instamatic that doesn't have a flash, you can actually get other 110 film cameras that they're still making today. Holga used to have one they made that I don't think is available online anymore. But Lamography makes one, it's called the Diana Baby, um, that last I checked was not in stock, but I think it's back in stock. It's like 30 something dollars. This is not sponsored, obviously. The camera looks a little cheap to me, and the ca that camera doesn't have a flash, but you can buy a flash system for another, like, I don't know, $50. I don't know if that's worth it. Personally, I would just go on eBay and get a Pocket Instamatic, but you can still today shoot 110 film with 
Flash. There are alternatives. You don't have to use the Pocket Instamatic. You can still try out this cool film. So is the Kodak Pocket Instamatic 20 worth it today in 2023? I think it is, personally. This image, blurry as it is, is still much more interesting to me than a sharp digital photo of the same thing. It has so much character in the imperfections, a concept the Japanese call wabi-sabi. But it's granted a lot of that style at surface level, and it's a little played out how in love we are with 80s aesthetic and culture, but there's a reason for our obsession. Digital was such a revolution, and it is amazing if we finally got enough space for retrospection to appreciate what we've lost with digital. And it feels really good to return to that analog equipment and to operate it and find it works. There's like a serotonin rush there that's hard to explain. And I'm a 90s kid, so for me and a lot of people younger than I am, it's not a return. And I think that's another really interesting piece, that culturally young people are experiencing nostalgia for an era they didn't live through. It's really a nostalgia for the media the 80s produced, and 70s, uh, and not the years themselves. That's why it's so cool you can pick up a camera from the 70s and take a photo of your friend Steve and suddenly you jumped in a time machine the size of a candy bar. Creating a kind of post-retro amalgamation of cyberpunk analog that's really cool. And either that will be looked at as such a 2020s thing, or it'll keep transforming with time. For some examples of what I'm talking about, check out Panos Cosmatos, Stranger Things, of course, or the movie Blood Machines. A bit of a tangent, but yeah, this camera is awesome, and you should get yourself one. Yeah, so I'm kind of going for like a Brian David Gilbert meets Captain Disillusion kind of thing, you know? You mean just now yeah. Like that? Yeah. No, no, yeah, no. Did no, you not I... get that? It was, it was good. Yeah, it was good. Give me the camera back. No, it was good. It was good. I'll give you trouble. It's the Kodak Pocket Instamatic Camera. There it is. No, it isn't. Where did I put it? Gotta see this camera.